Welcome to the deep dive. Yeah. We're all busy people, right? You're here because you want to get to the heart of what's important quickly. Definitely. Today, we are going deep on a report from Goldman Sachs. And uh, yeah, it unpacks how AI is like completely changing the tech world. Right. No. And we're not talking about small changes here. No, this is big. This is a total shift. This is a seismic shift. Yeah. yeah. This isn't about, you know, a new app or like a slightly better algorithm or anything. Um, the report really argues that this is a a true replatforming okay. of the economy. So think about like the whole foundation of how technology and businesses work. Right. It's being completely rewritten. Wow. So everything has to adapt. So it's, it's like the rules of the game are changing. Exactly. Yeah. So what we're going to try to do today is really pull out the most important insights from this report. Mm. Uh, what does this AI replatforming mean for technology itself? Right. And and also, where is the smart money going? Yeah. Where is the investment headed? Absolutely. Exactly. Big questions. So this this replatforming idea, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, the report mentions uh, that for the last decade or so, we've been thinking about enterprise software in terms of this 4D framework. Yeah. Can you kind of break that down for us? Like, what was that all about? Sure. And then how does AI change that picture? Yeah. So the 4D framework, it basically provided a way to look at enterprise software through four, like, key lenses, you know, yeah. data, huh. developer-friendly architectures. Right. Deployment in hybrid environments. So that means both on-premise and in the cloud. That's right. And then consumption on devices. Right. So those four Ds, those were really the dominant, you know, forces shaping the industry for, for the last 10 years. Yeah. But what's really interesting now, and the report gets into this, is how AI is like totally changing the power dynamics okay. within that framework. You know, there's this huge shift happening towards data and compute platforms. So does that mean that the applications themselves are becoming less important? Yeah, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> the report is saying that AI, you know, it needs so much data and so much processing power right. that it's driving this need for really open platforms in areas like data management, okay. observability, you know, understanding how systems are performing. Yeah. And even the software development lifecycle, like the whole process of building software. Okay. Companies are getting really, really wary of being locked into these, what they call walled gardens. Proprietary systems? Yeah, exactly. Proprietary systems where they can only use one vendor's tools and stuff. Right. You know, they want more flexibility, especially now with the economy the way it is. Exactly. Everyone's trying to be really efficient. Right. You know, because, you know, AI models, they need tons of data. Yeah. They need a lot of computing power. So companies... They want to be able to choose the best tools for the job. Absolutely. For data storage, processing, development without being, you know, stuck with one vendor. So you can't really take advantage of AI if your data is like trapped in a silo somewhere or your tools are too limiting. You need that freedom. You need that flexibility. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And speaking of potential, the report quotes Karthik Subramanian saying that enterprise AI could produce the next cutting edge technology company. Oh, interesting. As model innovations and new inferencing stacks proliferate. Wow. It sounds like we might see some big new players coming onto the scene. Mm. What kind of companies though? Like what would they be doing? Yeah. I mean, he's basically saying that these advancements in AI models, you know, the algorithms right. and the infrastructure, especially the inferencing stacks, which is like the software and hardware you need to actually run these models. Okay. They're creating this environment where like entirely new tech giants could emerge. Mm. This isn't just about like existing companies adding a few AI features. It's like completely new categories of companies. Mm. Maybe focused on like specialized AI services or like new kinds of AI hardware that go way beyond the traditional GPUs or even just entirely new ways of like interacting with data using AI. It's almost like we can't even imagine what some of these companies might be doing yet. Exactly. Because the possibilities are so wide open. Yeah. Okay, so the report then shifts gears a bit, okay. and it talks about why infrastructure software is so important yeah. in this whole AI replatforming, mm -hmm. and they draw a parallel to some of the big tech shifts that we've seen in the past. Right. Could you walk us through that history and then connect it to AI? Yeah, absolutely. So the report points out this pattern that kind of repeats itself, you know, throughout these big technology revolutions from uh -huh. like 
the PC era to mobile to the cloud. Right. So at first, the companies that like make the most money, the most visible gains, are often the semiconductor and hardware companies. Okay. The ones who provide the like the core technology. They build the foundation. Yeah, exactly. They build the foundation, but then the real value, the sustained value, okay, and like the biggest chunk of the market. It ends up in the infrastructure software layer. Interesting. So think about the cloud, right? Yeah. Companies like AWS, they built this massive infrastructure. Right. But it was a software that let businesses actually use and manage that infrastructure. Right. Where we saw something like 60% of the total market value go. Wow. 60%. Yeah, it's huge. So the real money was in making the cloud usable, not just building it. Exactly. Okay. So... Why is infrastructure software poised to be so important again now with AI? It's playing this like crucial middleman role again. Okay. It's bridging the gap between the raw power of the new AI hardware, you know, those fancy chips, right. and the actual development and deployment of AI applications. Think of it as like the operating system okay. and the essential services that make everything run smoothly. Gotcha. So, you know, we've seen all this investment in AI hardware, right? Yeah. Developing those chips, getting them out there. Right. Infrastructure software. That's the next logical step. Uh, That's where we're going to see the real leverage and the big innovation. Because AI is so complex. Exactly. It needs specialized tools to manage it all. Yeah. The models are complicated. Right. You need really robust software to handle everything. Okay. So we've got the hardware foundation, the infrastructure's software layer on top of that. Right. But then who are the builders? Who's actually working on this new foundation? That's the key question. The report talks a lot about developers being more important than ever. Yeah. But when we say developers in this context, who are we really talking about? Yeah, that's an important point. The report actually takes a pretty broad view of developers. Okay. It's not just the traditional software engineers, you know, the ones who write code. Right. It also includes designers who are shaping the user experience. Oh, it is yeah. scientists who work with all that raw information that fuels... AI and even increasingly AI agents themselves. Yeah. You know, these AI systems that can actually generate code and automate tasks. But anyone who's involved in building, designing, deploying software and AI. Exactly. Yeah. In this new world. Okay. So, why is it so important to engage these developers to keep them happy? Yeah. Especially for platforms that want to be leaders in AI. Because those are the folks and even the AI entities that right. are going to decide which platforms win, right? Right. If you can get developers on board, if you can get them excited, yeah. if you can keep them loyal, then your platform becomes like the foundation for the next generation of applications. So you want to be the platform that everyone's building on. Exactly. Okay, right. And historically, developers have always been the early adopters, right. the huh. ones who drive innovation when new technologies come along. Right. And now... With AI, it's even more important. Yeah, because AI is changing how they work. Yeah, it's changing their workflows. It's giving them new tools. Right. So the platforms that empower developers today, those are the ones that are going to lead the market tomorrow. It's a battle to win the best builders. It is. Both human and AI. Yeah. Okay, so all this change that we're talking about, yeah. it's got to be shaking up the competitive landscape. That's for sure. Big time. Mm. Uh, the report quotes Salesforce CEO Mark Benioff as saying, Okay. In the software industry, when there is a new technology model and a new business model, everything is up for grabs. Wow, yeah. I mean, that sets the stage for some serious disruption. Absolutely, it does. So what are the big forces driving this evolution in competition? Yeah, so the report highlights three critical vectors. Okay, what's the first one? First one is compute. Okay. We've seen a massive shift away from traditional CPUs right. towards GPUs, which are much better at handling the parallel processing demands of AI. Right. But at the same time, we're seeing these new AI-specific CPUs coming out okay. designed from the ground up for AI. So new kinds of chips entirely. Exactly, yeah. Interesting. Think about NVIDIA and their CUDA libraries. You know, they're not just selling chips. They're building a whole ecosystem around them. Okay. CUDA is basically a set of tools and software that makes it easier for developers to use their GPUs for AI. So they're making it easier for developers to use their hardware. 
Exactly. Okay. And then you have the hyperscalers like Google, Amazon, Microsoft. They're increasingly building their own chips wow. called ASICs okay. to reduce their reliance on the traditional GPU makers. So they want to control more of the stack. They do. Interesting. They want to optimize for their specific AI workloads. Makes sense. Okay, so that's compute. What's the second force? The second vector is software. Okay. We're seeing this fundamental shift from software that was designed to be application-centric right. to software that is inherently data-centric. So instead of the app being the center, it's the data. Yeah, exactly. Right. Data is not just something that applications use. It's like the foundation they're built on now. Okay, and the third force? Data itself. Okay. Data is a fundamental input for the whole application development process. Right. You can't build good AI models without tons of good data. You need the fuel. Exactly. Okay, so those three shifts, compute, software design, and data. Right. They're blurring the lines between different kinds of tech companies. Like car. The report calls this a 3D chessboard. Yeah, it's a good analogy. It really is. It's complex. It's really complex. Can you give us an example of how these lines are getting blurred? Sure. Think about the hyperscalers again. Okay. Microsoft, with their Azure platform and now Microsoft Fabric, right. they're offering these comprehensive data warehousing and big data analytics capabilities. Okay. So now they're competing directly with companies like Databricks and Snowflake. Who were traditionally data platform companies. Exactly. Wow. But then those data platform companies are now starting to add application development tools mm -hmm. right into their platforms. So users can build apps right where their data is. So everyone wants to be the one-stop shop for AI. Yeah, they want to be the central hub. Okay. Yeah. So with all this competition, all this change happening, what role are mergers and acquisitions playing? m and Oh, it's huge. Yeah. The report expects to see a lot more M&A activity. Really? Yeah. Driven by AI. Yeah, absolutely. You've got all these private companies looking for an exit. Okay. You've got big corporations that want to get into AI fast. Right. And you've got private equity firms that are trying to get more exposure to AI. Okay. So it's going to be a very active deal environment. And we've already seen some big deals, right? Yeah. Uh, the report mentions AMD's intent to acquire ZT Systems. Right. Why is that one so interesting? That's a strategic move by AMD to like really solidify their position in the AI hardware world. Okay. By getting ZT Systems, they gain expertise in system level design and integration so they can optimize their chips. Yeah. Specifically for AI workloads, it shows that chip companies are thinking beyond just selling chips. They're building solutions. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. What about on the software side? Yeah. The report highlights Salesforce acquiring own and IBM's intent to acquire HashiCorp. Mm -hmm. What do those deals tell us? Those are great examples of like established software giants that are really trying to prepare for this AI-driven future. Right. Salesforce buying own gives them a boost in data platform capabilities, which are essential for powering AI. Okay. You know, all those like agentic features where the AI can act more autonomously. Right. And then IBM going after HashiCorp, that's about building a really strong hybrid cloud platform okay. designed for AI environments. These acquisitions show how the big players are using M&A to fill gaps in their offerings and really accelerate their AI strategies. They're trying to stay ahead of the curve. They are. Okay, so the report also talks about some interesting emerging categories within infrastructure software yeah. that are particularly relevant to AI. What are some of the key characteristics of these new areas? So the big one is what they call new AI cloud ecosystems. Okay. These go beyond like the traditional cloud providers that we all know. Right. They include things like NeoClouds, which are these newer cloud providers focused on AI. Okay. And specialized software ecosystems built specifically for enterprise AI. Okay. We're seeing innovation in areas like, you know, reasoning models, okay. AI that can actually explain its decisions. Right. Inference as a service, making it easier to use AI models, oh, and agentic infrastructure, the systems that support autonomous AI agents. So it's like the infrastructure is becoming intelligent itself. Yeah, in a way. Okay, so how do these AI clouds differ from the regular cloud platforms? It's all about optimization. Okay. Traditional cloud infrastructure is designed to be really general purpose. Okay. It provides storage, compute, networking for a wide range of applications. Right. AI cloud, it's built for the specific demands of AI. Things like 
training really complex machine learning models, okay. running those models at scale, processing huge data sets. Right. It often involves using high performance GPUs, specialized AI chips, uh -huh. automated tools for managing the whole machine learning life cycle. Okay and AI native orchestration tools. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's a big focus on data governance and security. Right, because AI data can be very sensitive. Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, AI cloud is becoming the backbone for things like enterprise automation, okay. real-time analytics with AI, and generative AI applications. Gotcha. Yeah. So the infrastructure is really being built to unleash the full power of AI. It is. Let's talk about the financial markets now. Okay. What role are IPOs and private equity playing in all this? So the report says that we can expect to see a lot more IPO activity in 2025. Okay. As liquidity in the market improves. Like. And investors will be looking for companies that have already achieved scale. Okay. They can show strong growth potential and they have a clear path to profitability. They need to have a good story. They do. Okay. Yeah. And what about private equity firms? It seems like they're doing more than just leveraged buyouts these days. Yeah, that's true. Private equity is shifting towards like growth oriented investments, kind of like venture capital. Okay. They're often acting as this bridge for companies that aren't quite ready to go public yet. Okay. They provide capital and like strategic guidance to help them grow. So it's like a stepping stone to an IPO. Exactly. And we're seeing more collaboration between private equity and strategic acquirers too, Okay. working together to help companies go public. Interesting. The report also mentions that private equity is looking at companies that might actually be negatively impacted by AI. Yeah, that's an interesting dynamic. Can you explain that a bit more? So with generative AI getting so good, Yeah. There's this expectation that some parts of the sauce market might see slower growth oh. and maybe even lower valuations. Because AI is doing more of the work. Exactly. So the software might not be as valuable. Yeah. Gotcha. So that makes those companies potential targets for private equity take private deals. Interesting. Like the report mentions that we saw a record number of tech take private transactions in 2024. Wow. And they highlight the 2025 acquisition of SolarWinds by Turnover Capital as an example. So AI is creating opportunities for some investors yeah. and challenges for others. It is. Okay, one of the things that surprised me in the report was the discussion about how resilient some of the legacy tech companies are. Yeah. Like the mainframe, which a lot of people thought was on its way out. Yeah, you'd think so, right? Yeah. In this age of like super fast technological change. Exactly. You'd think that these older platforms would just fade away. Right. But the report highlights this really interesting thing. Some of these legacy platforms, like the mainframe, are incredibly sticky. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. Large organizations still rely on them. And what's even more interesting is that the companies behind these platforms, okay. they're not just surviving, they're actively figuring out how to be relevant in this AI world. So they're reinventing themselves. They are. Can you give us an example? Yeah. The report talks about Rocket Software acquiring open texts, application development, and modernization business. Okay. This lets them offer mainframe modernization solutions. Oh, okay. Helping their clients bridge the gap between their old systems and these new AI-driven ecosystems. So they're connecting the old and the new. Exactly. Wow, that's pretty cool. It is. It seems like AI is giving these legacy companies a second chance. Yeah, in a way. The report talks about the reopening of strategic windows right. for companies. Right. What does that mean? It means that even if a company missed out on some of the big tech shifts in the past. Like the internet or mobile. Yeah, exactly. AI is creating new opportunities for them to adapt and innovate. It's not just about raising money. It's about fundamental changes in the technology landscape. Right. Companies can reinvent themselves. So AI is like a reset button. In a way, yeah. Okay, so to wrap things up, what have we learned today? Well, this deep dive into the Goldman Sachs report shows us that AI is more than just a new feature, right? Right. It's a force that's completely reshaping the tech world and the economy. It's a game changer. It is. Yeah. We're seeing this big shift towards data and compute. Developers are more important than ever. The competition is fierce. M&A and investment are driving change. And even old tech companies are finding ways to adapt. It's a lot to take in. It is. So for our listeners out there, here's something to think about. Okay. What existing technology or maybe even a non-tech company do you think is most likely to be disrupted by AI? Mm. Or, on the other hand, 
which company do you think will successfully reinvent itself? Yeah. And what will be the key factors that determine their success or failure? Big questions. Yeah. It's something to consider as AI continues to evolve. It is. Thanks for taking the deep dive with us. Absolutely. We'll see you next time. See you then.